What's up everybody, Nathan Larson here with another video for you home studio artists, songwriters, producers. Basically, if you write and record music, this is the channel for you, so subscribe. And in this video, I'm talking about one of the new features in Logic Pro 10's update to 10.5. We're talking about the Remix plugin. This thing is super fun. It's gonna be super useful, not only for those of you who are producing in your own home studio environment, but also if you're wanting to take this out in gig, whether you're doing that at live venues or house concerts, I think this could be really cool to use in house concert environments. If you are an independent artist looking to not only make better music, but make a more successful music business, check us out at Artist Mentor, links down below. We've got a songwriting course, we've got a business course, that's free. And if you want more hands-on coaching, well, we've got that too. But let's jump into Logic now. All right, so now that we are here in Logic, we're gonna go ahead and talk about how we can actually use this Remix plugin. So first things first, let's find it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open up a track here. I've got this example, it's just a piano part. Let's listen to it. Pretty basic. So go into your channel strip and you're gonna be able to go down to specialized and you're gonna find it right there in remix effects. Very simple, go ahead and open up that remix plugin. Now you can open this on an individual track and you can also open it on a stereo output. You can open it on a bus. You can do any number of different things. So what's really cool about this is let's just take this off here and let's go ahead and go to down here. So all of my drums, all of this stuff down here is all percussion and the output to almost all of this, not all of it. You can see, let's see, all of this stuff is bus 25 and then we've got bus 30. So we've got two different buses that these are going to. So what's pretty cool is let's just go ahead and say that I want to go to bus 30. I can go ahead and add the remix plugin on that bus. So let's just go to this. I wanna solo it out so that we can hear uh, how this is gonna sound. Okay, so this is what we've got here. Okay, so with the remix effects, let me just show you what this is gonna do first off. You have two options or two sides here that you can control. And this has, y, has a Y and an X axis. And so what you can do is actually just click on here and start making some really dramatic impact on the effects that it's gonna control. Now up here, you can control which effect you want this to be. So automatically, it's gonna have this set to a filter. You can have a repeater, reverb, delay, orbit, and wobble. Automatically, it's gonna be a filter on this side, and then it will be a repeater on this side. Now these dials in here control a couple different things. So this is more of a stutter effect, and this right here is gonna be a bit crusher. And then you have, um, this is like a turntable, and then a slow down effect that you can use. And I believe this is like a speed up type of a thing. You can open this up here so it will show you more of the grid that you can control. So automatic, it's like reverse time is gonna be an eighth note. The repeater time is gonna show you that so you can make this divisions that are in basically eighth note, 16th note, quarter note divisions, or you can do triplet divisions as well. So you can see here, you've got these lines running up and down. These are actually different rhythms. So let me just demonstrate what this means. So basically you're gonna control this whole effect in here by clicking. This is if you're doing it on desktop or with your laptop. I'm gonna show you here in a second how to do this with Logic Remote. So let's just go ahead and listen to this example and we'll start tweaking uh, with the Remix Effects plugin. So let's go ahead and do the repeater since this is a percussion and I already have quite a lot of filtering happening on this percussion. So let's go and play this. So this is actually kind of hard to tell on a percussive deal. So let's go ahead and actually go into this piano. Let's just take a look at the piano here. Let's open it up on this one track individually and start showing you how this whole thing works. So let's go ahead and work on the note repeater here first. So again, if you go into here, you can control whether you want this to be a triplet division or not. So let's go ahead and play this. So let me go ahead and solo this out so you can actually really hear how this is working. So you can notice that what's happening is whenever I click way up here, this is going to be a very fast rate, right? And then the mix is upwards. So this is gonna be mixed super loudly as loud as it goes really fast. Now if I go down here, it's gonna mix it in softer, listen.
and then we can change the rhythm by going left or right. Check this out. So I'll just go to the top here and do this line. You can hear the rhythm that it does. Dun, dun, da, 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 right? And then again, the mix is gonna be up and down. So if I go way down here, it's gonna be mixed in pretty lightly. So what's cool is you could actually start with this mix down and then bump it up like this. So the thing that you need to know too is that whenever you use this, you need to click it or hit it basically whenever a note is actually sounding. So if you start doing this after a pitch has already sounded, it's not going to work in the same way. So specifically with the repeater, you wanna make sure that basically whenever the transient hits is when you wanna start using this. Now, you can go ahead and automate this stuff here. So let's just go ahead and go into latch mode and let's go ahead and start doing some stuff to get this to work. All right, cool. Let's just go ahead and go into read and you're gonna notice that you have all of these different options. So you got the repeater rate, repeater mix, and then on and off. So let's just kind of uh, make this a little bit bigger here. And now we can go ahead and start tweaking the automation. So again, you can turn this on or off here. Uh, you can change how much you want it mixed in. And of course the cool thing is with automation, you can add uh, more shape to it, right? You can make this a straight line or you could go into the automation curves tool and you could actually uh, change the curve and slope of this. So you can get really creative with this particular plugin is specifically when it comes to your automation. So this is using that on an individual track. So let's go ahead and look at a different element. We're gonna go ahead and look at the filter here. So the cutoff is gonna be your left and right, and then the resonance is gonna be up and down. So let's just check out what happens when we go to one extreme to the next. So down here you're gonna hear nothing. So this is basically filtering everything out. It's removing all the high, all the lows. So you can see all the different uh, ways that we can get creative with this. Now let's try something else out. Let's go into the wobble. Uh, this is probably not gonna work super great for the piano effect, but just so you can hear what this does. So you've got the rate and then the depth. So this would be a very slow rate, but a deep depth and then the rate increases. Okay, so this would be really good for, uh, like I could see this being used on like some really synthy bass parts and things like that. Reverb, this is really cool. I love this feature. You can go in here. I could see really using this on vocals as well to get like a vocal that just like goes boom, way wide space and then comes right back. So let's go ahead and just do that real quick. Let's see what this would sound like on this vocal that I've got recorded here. Let's leave the piano on. I'm lost in an ocean of overwhelm. So like overwhelm when she sings that, having the mix. Overwhelm. Oh, I gotta go into reverb. I'm lost in an ocean of overwhelm. Capture between your world and my own. And actually, you could really use this like a vocal throw. You could basically, and I'm just gonna show you what I mean. You could take this vocal here. I've already got it. My own realm. So she sings my own realm, right? So check this out. We could go into here. So let's play this. My own realm. Yeah. So you could do some cool stuff like that. World of my own realm. This is part. You could try the repeater on vocals too. This could be a really cool effect. Capture between my own you could get some really cool stutter effects. Then this right over here, just so you guys know, actually is more of like a stutter. Capture between the world and my own so it's gonna actually chop it up. Capture between the world and my own and then you've got this right here. It's a bit crusher. And then finally, you got these middle controls here. 
So like a turntable effect. So that's going to do more of that stutter as well. And then this. So you can do some drops like that. Let's take a look at a couple other elements of this. So the next thing you have is delay. Let's go ahead and do the delay on this. This could actually be more of like a delay on a, a for like a vocal throw. So this is gonna be the rate again and then feedback. So um, I don't wanna make this super stinking long. Let's just get rid of that for the time being. But what's cool is you can basically automate all of this. Now, when they made this tool, they were also thinking live use. You can use this in a live setting, which is totally true. I look at this as someone that doesn't really do shows. I look at this, I'm thinking, man, this is gonna make really cool automation super possible. Now let's look at this orbit feature. So again, depth and rate. So it's gonna go much faster over here and it's gonna be mixed in a lot heavier. And then over here, it's pretty aggressive. And then you have the exact same parameters over here. You can lock these parameters by clicking the lock button here and you click anywhere on here and it will lock so you don't have to drag as much. So it won't just disappear whenever you click and drag, just like that. So again, you have all these options. So now what I've showed you so far is looking at individual tracks, okay? But, and then I showed you can use this on like a bus, for example. You can use this on your master as well. So let me just show you how we could do this on the stereo out. And let's go to a different part of the song here. So there you guys go. You can see how we can use this. Oops, I did not mean to close that. So that would be using the filter. I could see doing this. Oh, I'm tired of pretending, tired of accepting it's just how it is. So you could do like really cool things with the reverb. I'm done with the acting, done with the hiding, it's time for a change. So there's a lot of really creative options with doing this whole entire thing. Let's just go. So this is me kind of messing around, hopefully showing you guys some ideas that you can use. But all in all, this is a really cool plugin. So main things, again, you've got these two options here on both sides. This is Bit Crusher. This is basically like a cutting and, and as you can see, it's almost like automating the volume up and up and down. You've got the stop turntable and then the replay sound. You can lock things here by doing that. And then finally, let's talk a little bit about how you can use this with Logic Remote. Hey, you. Why, why haven't you subscribed? You should, you should probably do that by now. Okay, back to the video. Okay, so let's just go ahead and jump into actually using the tablet now. So as you can see here, I have my tablet open. This is just what it looks like right away when I open it. A couple things if you didn't know, you can go ahead and just click on the button on the top here. You'll be able to start scrolling through your timeline to get to different portions, sections of the song. So we'll go ahead and just play this. So that's the first thing. Now, in order to go ahead and start getting into the effects panel, you can go right up here and click effects. Now, from what I understand about how they have this set up, this is going to control automatically, not the individual parameters. This will affect the overall parameters. In other words, what I mean is this is actually going to affect the entire track. This will not affect one individual track. So listen to this. Okay, so the one cool thing about this is obviously you can just use your fingers and you can start hearing that how it's affecting my voice there and this really quite nice control. Now, the other thing that you can do with this is click right here. 
let's not do that. Let's go ahead and do maybe something a little bit different. Let's do like a repeater. Okay, so what, what you can do here is actually hit this button here on the right. Now I need to get this to something that's not gonna make as big of a difference. Let's just go ahead and do filter. Now I would have to pick the tablet up in order to do this. Notice what's happening. <laughs> you can even hear it on my voice. If you have it right in the center, it's not gonna do anything, but as we start moving the tablet on an, on an axis there, it's gonna start actually making a difference on how we have things set up. So that's one of the cool things. You can do this exact same thing on your iPhone as well. It works the exact same way. Of course, we can go ahead and open up everything the same way we can on the computer. Now, the next thing I wanna mention is that if you have your computer open, you'll notice that as I start doing things on here, whatever I click on my tablet, it's doing the same thing over here. So you can check. You can check out that whole thing, which is super cool that this, you know, all of it reflects exactly what's happening. So a couple really cool things that you can use as an artist is you can definitely use this live. So if you're using backing tracks and you want to have logic open, you want to start really adding some cool live elements. That's really what they design this app for. Now, for me as a songwriter and as a producer, I see this more as something I would be using in the production process for automation. But again, they really made this so you can use it live. Now, just keep in mind that if you are using this live with a tablet or with your phone, you do have to have an internet connection because you have to have them synced up together. But again, hopefully all of this can just demonstrate pretty well how you can make this work for you in your situation. If you like this video, like it for the YouTube algorithm. Also subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, drop me a comment in the comments down below if you have any thoughts, questions, or concerns. We'll see you next time.